Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. You are in a machine uprising where trucks are hunting humans and will not rest until they exterminate all living beings. Today we will recap the movie, Maximum Overdrive. On the morning of June 19, 1987, alarming news is broadcast on the radio. A gigantic comet is passing very close to the Earth, leaving the planet on the celestial body's tail for the next eight days, and thanks to the radiation, totally unexpected and dangerous effects begin to happen. One of these effects is noticeable when the mechanisms of a drawbridge start to activate on its own, causing the movable bridge to rise with several vehicles on it, causing the fall of motorcyclists in a large pile up, causing millions of dollars in damages and forcing the people to get out of their cars so they don't end up dead. At a gas station in the middle of nowhere in North Carolina, a truck from a toy store with a bizarre green face stops for gas. The driver goes to the convenience store, where Wanda, the local waitress, tries to get her radio to work, but no frequencies seem to be picking up. Outside, Duncan, the gas station attendant who was responsible for refueling the truck, is doing his job until the gas pump suddenly stops. Believing that some dirt had clogged the object, the man tries to clean it and when looking at the hose, an immense amount of diesel hits his face and inside his eyes, leaving him practically blind. Concerned about his co-worker, Another employee calls the owner of the gas station who goes by the name of Hendershot to warn him and get permission to take Duncan to the hospital. But his boss is a complete imbecile, saying only to wash the man's eyes and get back to work, as he still needs to sort out Billy, a young thief who, when caught stealing a small amount, was sentenced to work at that place for some months. The owner of the gas station wants the boy to work overtime, but without getting paid for it and when Billy refuses, the man threatens to report to the authorities a bad behavior of his employee, something that never really happened. Realizing that if he did not accept he would be harmed and could even be arrested, the man ends up accepting forced labor and returns to his work. Near the customers, Wanda is at the grill making some snacks when her electric knife suddenly turns on and starts to spin towards her. When the distracted woman reaches out to get some condiments, she suffers a deep cut on her arm, causing her to lose a lot of blood. With the tremendous fright, she ends up dropping the knife on the floor, which turns on once more and approaches her victim. Seeing that the object was almost cutting the woman's feet and that it seemed to be attacking her, Billy takes a hammer and completely destroys the utensil. In the establishment's game room, a man arrives to play, but all the arcade machines appear to be malfunctioning, spitting out coins from their interiors. Taking advantage of the fact that the cigarette machine also malfunctioned and started throwing the packs out, the man starts to fill his pockets and when he is about to leave, he ends up playing in one of the arcades, taking a huge electrical discharge that kills him instantly. On a road not far from there, Brett is hitchhiking with a psycho salesman who keeps touching her without her permission and while threatening the man to take his hand off her leg, the girl tries to get the car radio to work. In a short time when the device manages to pick up some frequency, she hears the announcer saying that everyone should stay away from anything minimally technological, in addition to the recommendation that everyone stay away from the highways, as some trucks are attacking people by the roads. Worried about the radio alerts, Brett asks the salesman to leave the highway they were on and after being ignored, the girl takes the wheel and turns the car in the direction of the gas station, leaving the man quite infuriated that she almost caused an accident. After they leave the vehicle, he runs after her and while the salesman yells at the girl, that truck with the devilish face starts to accelerate towards the two and almost kills them, thanks to Brett who saw the vehicle approaching and threw them aside, saving their lives. Seeing that the truck driver was still inside the store, one of the customers asks the truck owner who could be driving and he just shows his keys, signaling that there was no one driving the vehicle. In a nearby town, newlyweds Connie and Curtis are on their way to their honeymoon when they find a bloodied body along the way, and stop to see if the person was still alive and needed help. After confirming that it was indeed a body, the husband starts looking for someone who has a phone to call the ambulance. And while looking through the window of a store, a tow truck suddenly appears and believing that the driver could help them, the man tries to get his attention, but the car simply breaks and starts speeding towards him trying to kill him. Luckily Curtis manages to jump to the side, thus avoiding being run over. The couple cheers for getting out of that situation unharmed, but they are scared when the tow truck starts up again and they run inside their car, initiating a desperate escape. In the middle of the highway, Connie and Curtis find a real horror convoy, with hundreds of trucks lined up along the road with no one behind the wheel. They carefully follow their course, apparently safe as none of the vehicles seem to have noticed their presence. But that completely changes when another tow truck crosses the road almost causing a collision and starts a new pursuit. Trying to escape, Curtis accelerates as much as possible, but his car is too slow, and thanks to this, the truck manages to hit the back of his car several times. The man starts driving wildly to dodge and when they come to a curve, the crazy winch goes off the road, causing an accident and completely exploding. 
At the gas station, Billy and Brett are having an intimate conversation, but are interrupted by Duncan, who, despite being almost blind, intends to go out to look for Dickie, his 14-year-old son. Billy even tries to convince him to give up the idea momentarily, at least until he fully regains his sight, but the man is determined to continue and while walking to start his search, he is run over and brutally killed by a truck. A few meters after being run over, that same truck ends up colliding with the seller's car, who goes outside and starts cursing the alleged driver. While he is distracted by his insults, the eyes of the devil-faced truck start to glow and the car goes full speed towards the man. He tries to run away, but is run over and his body ends up being thrown into a ditch. On the baseball field, several miles away from his father, Dickie is in a game where his team ends up winning, and to celebrate the achievement, the coach decides to buy soda for the teenagers, but when he puts the money in the machine, it spits several cans, hitting him in the forehead and causing a fatal wound. The boy tries to get to his trainer to help him, but he is also attacked by the cans and realizing that the man was already dead, Dickie starts to walk away. On the way he sees one of his companions being crushed by a steamroller. Knowing that if he stayed there he would have the same fate, the boy takes his bike and decides to go to his father, running away from there as fast as he can. As he passes through the neighboring town, Dickie sees several bodies covered in blood everywhere, even finding a dog that was attacked by these damn machines. When he was on the edge of town, the boy starts to hear the ice cream truck approaching and already imagining that it was another machine gone crazy. The teenager drops his bike on the sidewalk and runs to hide in the bushes. When he thinks the danger has passed, Dickie gets on his bike and as he watches the ice cream man drive away, a blood-soaked lawnmower starts up by itself and starts chasing him. At the gas station, the trucks begin to circle around, surrounding people and completely removing the possibility of fleeing from there, but outside, Curtis is determined to enter the circumference and finds a gap that he believes is perfect. Deciding to take advantage of the space, the boy starts to accelerate and almost manages to pass, but is hit in the trunk and his car flips on impact. Seeing that the couple needed help, Billy and Brett run to help them, even with some difficulty they manage to free Connie who was trapped in her seatbelt. As they try to flee back inside the store, one of the trucks starts chasing them and when they are about to be caught, Hendershot appears with a supreme bazooka and blows up the vehicle, allowing everyone to escape with their lives. A few hours later, Dickie is on the highway heading towards his father's work when he finds the tow truck that was destroyed by Curtis and Connie off the road and while watching the charred truck, a bizarre plane with no one in charge begins to fly over it and afraid of suffering an air attack, the boy once again hides in the woods. After a few seconds the aircraft disappears from view, giving him the chance he needed to continue on his way to Duncan's work. But arriving there, the boy finds the trucks orbiting the gas station and decides to enter through the sewer pipe. However, this is not possible, due to a grid that was covering the tube. With no more options, Dickie stays hidden waiting for an opportunity to go. At dusk, Wanda who is totally drunk takes a very stupid attitude. The woman leaves the gas station and starts cursing the trucks, saying that humans created them and for that they should be grateful. As was obvious from the start, the woman ends up catching the attention of one of them who tries to kill her, but is saved at the last moment by Billy. When they return to the gas station, the electricity is cut and in total darkness the group notices that the number of trucks in the circle was decreasing, probably due to lack of fuel and so they believe that just wait for the diesel to run out and everyone will be free. In the middle of the night, they hear the salesman screaming for help. Turns out he didn't die when he was run over, he was just injured and ended up passing out, but now he's stuck in the middle of the ditch asking for someone to help him free himself. Seeing the man's desperation, Curtis and Billy volunteer to help him and start coming up with a plan. They then have the idea of taking some of the weapons that are in the basement of the establishment and run to the employee's bathroom, so that they can go down the shower drain, which gives access to the ditch where the seller is trapped. Once outside, the duo say goodbye to the group and start to run, taking shelter behind a car. When one of the trucks runs out of fuel, they find the chance they need and run to the bathroom, where they tie a rope to the ceiling pipe and use it to descend to the sewer. In the ditch, Dickie hears the salesman's screams and starts to approach, but when he gets closer he realizes that he is unconscious and when checking his vitals, the man regains consciousness and holds him by the ankle while ordering the boy to release him from there. But even if Dickie managed to do something, it wouldn't do any good, because the salesman dies moments later, in that same position. As soon as they emerge from the sewer, Curtis and Billy hear the boy's screams and run to help him. Arriving there, the duo releases Dickie and, realizing that the man was already dead, decide to run back to the sewer as quickly as possible, as one of the trucks starts chasing them. After leaving the drain, the trio starts to return to the gas station and halfway, Billy uses that bazooka to blow up another one of the trucks. As soon as they arrive at the convenience store, Dickie asks for his father and Hendershot tells the boy he was dead, 
but says so in an extremely rude way, leaving the boy devastated. At dawn, two more vehicles arrive at the station and immediately the other trucks stop moving. One of these vehicles is a wheel loader, those used in civil construction and the other is a military car with a machine gun attached. After the hydraulic shovel pushes a car from the parking lot into the store destroying everything in its path, Hendershot runs to his basement and returns with his bazooka, firing at the vehicle. As revenge, the machine gun starts shooting all over the store, killing the owner of the gas station and a few other people who can't get down in time. Seeing a good part of her friends dead, Wanda revolts once more and goes outside with the bazooka in hand. And her end was inevitable, she ends up being hit several times, losing her life a few seconds later. After all the chaos, the military vehicle starts honking in Morse code and luckily, Dicky knows this well, thanks to his experience as a scout. So he takes a paper and a pen, and begins the translation. As the trucks were almost out of fuel, the request is for one of the humans to go outside and refuel them all, otherwise everyone inside would be killed. As soon as the boy finishes writing, one of the employees says that without power the pumps don't work and unexpectedly the electricity in the place returns. Apparently it was the machines that turned off the power to the place. Billy then comes up with a plan and leaves to fill up the trucks, but as he does the job, a huge line forms as more and more vehicles arrive on the highway. After filling up many gallons, the gas pump ends up emptying and the boy puts his plan into practice. While one of the employees is cutting the grate from the tube Dickie found so they can get out there, Billy pretends to be talking to another man and approaches the military car, where he drops a grenade and starts running. Realizing what the boy has done, the machine gun starts firing several shots at them, but it explodes after a few seconds. With the most dangerous vehicle out of the way, as soon as it gets dark, the group takes several weapons from the basement and goes down the pipe, initiating the escape. Outside the trucks start to totally destroy the gas station and its convenience store, causing a huge mushroom with the explosion. Knowing they couldn't trust the cars, group begins to flee on foot to the nearest dock, where they plan to take a boat without an engine and head to some deserted island to stay there until the radiation effects wear off. As the group is approaching the objective they decide to take a break to rest, but the call system of a drive through next to them gives away their position. As revenge for his father's death, Dickie simply shoots the device, but it was too late, the crazy ice cream truck found them. To save the group, Curtis and Brett run onto the road and begin shooting at the vehicle, shattering it to pieces in the explosion. Believing that they are free from their pursuers, the group continues on their way and as soon as they arrive at the boats, one of the employees of the station sees a beautiful ring on a woman's body in a car and decides to take it. But while the man is distracted admiring a jewel, the demonic toy truck finds them and ends up killing him by running over. Wanting to put an end to that nightmare, Billy takes his ex-boss's bazooka and makes one last shot, causing the truck that was then the final boss to turn into a gigantic ball of fire after exploding. After the predicted eight days have passed, the planet stops being influenced by the comet's tail and the group can finally return to civilization. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.